Graduate students, good morning. This is going to be a lesson on analyzing sedimentary rocks by how and where they form. I actually re-recorded this because I have a better mic. I have my cool headset, so I thought I would better the uh, video quality just going forward. All right, so just a little review about the types of rocks just to kind of put it into context. We went over igneous rocks, which are formed by you know, liquid rocks, you know, magma or lava, cooling, and mineral crystals grow from that. So like that experiment we have going on in the classroom right now, which hopefully we'll get to see, uh, you know, the minerals are growing out of a liquid. Sedimentary rocks, for the most part, uh, glued sedimentary particles, but we're also going to talk about chemical and biologic in origin, uh, you know, sedimentary rocks as well. The last is going to be metamorphic. We'll talk about that tomorrow. I won't even bother with that right now. All right, so clastic rocks. Uh, when we say the word clastic, we're saying fragments. So the word clastic means a fragment, or clast is a fragment. Um, so clastic rocks are fragments that have been glued together, that have been cemented together. So the word cement means glue. You can see over here on the bottom left, it's very, very obvious how those sediments have been glued together. Uh, there is a natural glue that is bringing them all together. We'll talk about that. Uh, and the clasts, you know, the sediments are very, very obvious. Now in this sandstone here, this layered sandstone, the, the clasts are not as obvious, but if you look carefully, you can see individual grains. If we had a microscope, slice up in the rock, take a look at it, it'd be much easier to see those individual sand grains all glued or you know, cemented together. I already mentioned this, and here are just some examples of what a class is. These are the sediments inside of a rock. So we have a conglomerate over here. Actually, we have two conglomerates. Uh, this, you know, the class is very obvious. We have a brescia over here. We have individual grains, individual fragments, all glued so a clast is sediment in a rock. These types of rocks are inorganic in origin, which means that they're coming from weather rock from the land. So a mountain is built, like let's say on Mount Everest, on Mount Everest is built, and over millions and millions and millions of years, that rock weathers down, it, all that sediment gets deposited somewhere, and it's formed into a sedimentary rock, you know, from that sediment. So it's coming from the land, it's inorganic, meaning it's coming from something that was, you know, never alive. The four steps to create these types of sedimentary rocks, you know, it's, I had just mentioned this, we have to deposit sediment, we have to bury it. So layer upon layer upon layer, we're compressing, squeezing out all the water, we're compacting it. And the final step is glue. There has to be some type of uh, natural glue that's present that finally forms the rock. You know, that's lithification, the process of making a rock. Just to put this into the, into the context of the rock cycle, we know that any type of rock, including a sedimentary rock, can be weathered, transported, right, eroded, and made in sediment. From there, the sediment is deposited, it's buried deep underground by other layers being deposited on top of it, right? Lots of deposition causes that burial. They're compacted, all the pore space, right? The porosity of that material reduces, the water is squeezed out, and then it's finally glued using some type of natural glue into a sedimentary rock. They can be layered or not. You know, this this conglomerate here doesn't have any layers. This sandstone has layers, so sedimentary rocks do not have to be layered. Uh, they typically are. When you see sedimentary rocks uh, out, you know, out in the field, if you're doing geology, or driving on the road, you see layers. Uh, that's a sedimentary rock. Now, as you might expect, 
the grains that make up a sedimentary rock are always going to be older than the rock itself, which makes sense because those grains had to exist first for the rock to be formed. You know, that's kind of obvious. Looking at page seven of the reference table, I'm going to go through each column here, just one at a time, for you to understand what the sedimentary rocks are all about and how you can kind of define them, how the chart works. So texture for our inorganic land-derived sediments, right? I mentioned they're inorganic in origin. They come from the land. These are going to be our clastic rocks, our fragments, the other native fragments. We have a bunch of different grain sizes here. I want you to take note how it actually gives numeric values for sand, silt, and clay. That's something you can reference. You can reference that if you need it. If the regions ask a question, if your test was here, you'll see, ask some questions about that. That's found right there. These types of rocks are all made of the same stuff, quartz and feldspar, all right? Um, quartz and feldspar have a very high hardness. So after all the weathering and erosion has been done, the weaker minerals tend to be dissolved or totally destroyed. Whereas quartz and feldspar have a higher hardness. You know, quartz is a hardness of seven. Uh, so, and Felsbar, I think, is a six or six and a half or something. So, it's much, much higher. It tends to remain after the weathering erosion is done. These are just some other comments that just talk about each of the rocks, like conglomerates tend to be rounded, fragments, brush is angular, shale tends to split, uh, you know, easily. And the last thing is the map symbols. So, when we look at geologic history, those will become way more important. For right now, you can just note that they're there. All right. Bioclastic rocks. So having an understanding of clastic here is really helpful because clastic means fragments. Bio means life. So bits of once living, uh, you know, organisms, or at least the shells of those once living organisms. So the shells become what's preserved. Uh, it could also be plant remains. We have a bit, you know, on this left, on the left here, this black rock is from, well, we're going to talk about it, from ancient uh, forests. Bioplastic uh, limestone, we see these really, really nice brachiopod fossils inside of this, kind of all this gray stuff. So we have these big fossils here, which make up the rock. That's obviously bioplastic. But all this gray stuff here, it is hard to tell what it is. You would have to have a microscope go in there and you would actually see that those are made up of microscopic uh, ocean organisms that have a shell. And as they died and were deposited in the ocean, they built up, built up, and went through the same process. They were compacted you know, and cemented into a rock. These are uh, coal seams, layers of coal. So let's talk a little bit about how coal forms. Um, ancient forests, going back a very, very long time ago, those forests are constantly building up plant material. That plant dies, new plants are made, they die. And over millions of years, you get layers and layers of peat, just uh, decaying organic plant matter. In a, in a forest or a swamp. And over time, that material is compressed deep in the earth, it's heated a bit, and it turns into lignite, which is just chemically altered from heat and pressure, chemically altered peat. As time goes on, the, the lignite is further compressed and heated into subbituminous coal, more heat and pressure of bituminous coal, and then of course, well, we'll talk about this later. Anthracite is metamorphic coal. So it's been metamorphosed through intense heat and pressure. More on that uh, later. Just looking at the reference table here, we're now uh, down. We're much, much lower now. You can see bioclastic is our texture. Okay. And the grain size can be anything from microscopic, as I showed you. Those microscopic fossils, that gray stuff. Uh, or it can be very, very coarse, like those big brachiopod shells I showed you. The composition for limestone is calcite. You can check that out on page 16 of the reference table. Uh, for coal, it's all carbon, so it's all made of carbon. You can see for limestone, the comment is precipitates or 
falls, it's falling from the ocean. You know, as the plants die, they're falling, it's precipitating. Of biologic origin, cemented shell fragments. Yeah, that's what limestone essentially is. Big or small shells made into a rock. And for coal, it's compacted plant remains, and there are the symbols. The brick pattern, you will see this in, uh, when we talk about uh, chapter 13, we'll look at rock layers, and that brick pattern will come up a lot. It's limestone. All right, last type of sedimentary rock. It's a uh, crystalline sedimentary rocks, uh, also called like chemical sedimentary rocks. They typically form from evaporation. So we have salty lakes or deep ocean deposits uh, that water evaporates. So this very salty water evaporates, and it leaves a ring on the outside of salt. It can also be on a salt flat. So these are salt flats in Nevada. It rains very heavily and all of that water evaporates and it leaves behind the salt. The Dead Sea salts, I actually have a really big chunk of this in my classroom. It's really, really cool. Uh, Dead Sea salt. Uh, the Dead Sea is, well, it's too salty, so there's only living in there. It's dead. And that water evaporates, and what's left is a perimeter of salt. People go bathing in it. It's very easy to float. People take the salt, and they rub it on their skin. It's good for your skin. Uh, things like that. Something we've all seen, especially in New York, when they salt the roads before a snowstorm, when all that water evaporates, when the snow is, you know, mostly gone, everyone's car is covered in these salt deposits, and they come from the evaporation of water, and the salt crystals are left behind. I've never seen this in the regions, uh, but we've looked at this before. It's horizontal sorting, and all the way out in the deep ocean, you can get precipitation of chemicals falling to the ocean floor. So it's not through evaporation, it's through precipitation from a supersaturated uh, solution falling to the ocean floor. In the reference table, you can see crystalline. There's our texture. Crystalline, your know, chemical crystalline rocks. Uh, find a course. The composition are all minerals. So halite is a mineral. That, that rock salt they showed you from Israel, that's all halite. Gypsum, dolomite, these are all uh, found on page, uh, page 16, the reference table if you need it. It tells you right here, crystals from chemical precipitates and evaporites, right? The evaporite lakes, and here are the map symbols, okay? So, something to know about sedimentary rocks in particular, I mean, rocks in general, reveal the past. You know, that's why we, I mean, that's one reason why they're studied. They tell us something about what the Earth was like in the past. And actually, the father of geology, uh, James Hutton, in the late, or mid to late 1800s, was the one to coin that term, that the rocks are the key, or actually, what he really said was that the present is the key to the past. And what he meant by was that, you know, what we see happening in the present rocks we see in the present are revealing something about what the past was like. So this present beach environment or this or these uh, you know coral reefs or this forest here, that's what the present looks like. But the rocks can tell us something about what was going on in the past. So for instance, limestone. If you ever see a limestone, limestones are generated from a shallow sea environment. So you might be seeing a limestone on the side of the road, but what that limestone is telling you is that where that road and that limestone used to be, it used to be deep or in the shallow ocean or in a shallow sea. If you ever see coal deposits, that's evidence that in the past there used to be a tropical rainforest there. You know, again, a very, 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 very long time ago, but there was tropical rainforest there. Uh, sandstones, you know, especially with cross bedding, large cross beddings, is evidence of a desert. These are really famous, the, the chalk cliffs of Dover. Uh, they're featured in movies all the time. Uh, uh, they're a really beautiful place. I've always wanted to go there. Uh, these huge cliffs, 
and those cliffs are made up of rock, of, of tiny microorganisms that were deposited in a deep ocean environment. Again, this is not in the deep ocean. It's above, it's above the water. In fact, we can see the ocean. But the rocks themselves are evidence that this all used to be underwater, deep, deep, deep un, you know, under the water a long time ago. So again, the present is the key to the past. Same thing here, this is a really famous rock formation. Uh, these are huge cross beds, uh, huge cliffs of cross beds. They were uh, they're evidence of sand dunes. That, that this area used to be covered in a large desert with lots of sand. That's no longer there, but the evidence of that is still in the rocks. Really large shell deposits. Again, can only be found in shallow ocean. These are large shells and in limestone. Now this one's particularly cool because if you look at these trees here, these trees are evergreen trees. So evergreens are typically found, at least in abundance, they're found at high latitudes, places that are cold. Uh, and these are these are coal seams. These you know, these are coal deposits. Those coal deposits are evidence of an ancient tropical rainforest or a swamp. And pre in the present, we're in what looks like near to the poles. We're at a high latitude. So in the present, it's cold, but these coal seams are evidence of, well, it used to be much warmer there. All right, that's it for the sedimentary rock video lesson. Um, as you know, I'm going to be posting a Google form you have to fill out based on this lesson, answer some questions, and I'm also going to post a test wizard. Now, the Google form will come every day. But the test wizard, as you know, you don't get test wizard homework every day, so I'll post that periodically. And yeah, that's it for today's lesson, and I will see you tomorrow.